Hey guys, in today's video we're tackling an interesting spline weaving technique that you can achieve with tie flow. By the end of the tutorial you will see how easily you can apply the effect to any kind of geometry. Alright, so let's get into 3ds Max. Here we've already got our ferocious T-Rex imported into the scene. Let's go ahead and create a Typeflow object, um, open the editor and start doing the Typeflow magic. Generally the idea here is that we want to move the particles from one part of the asset to the other over its surface. So first let's add our target by adding a simple birth operator to Typeflow with a single particle. You might set the display to something distinct to differentiate the target from other particles. Now we we'll want to position it somewhere on the asset, so let's do that with a position object operator. Let's pick our asset, go into edit poly and pick a single vertex as the target. Let's for instance select the very tip of our T-Rex's tail, uh, which it acts as a pretty good endpoint. Then in the position object operator, let's change the location to selected vertices. You should see the tick already moved to the tail where we want it to be and that's going to be our target. Now we'll go with another birth operator and add it as a new event. These are going to define our splines, so let's go with adding something like 50 particles for starters. We'll define the position of our new particles with a tie icon. The icon shape isn't really important here, so we could just stay with the default one and just position it somewhere near the asset. It will be the starting point of, for our splines, and in this case we could just go with the T-Rex's head. Going back to tie flow, let's add a position icon operator and add our newly created tie icon. For the sake of preview, we can multiply the particle's size just to see them better. Next, let's add a set target operator, which will define our target vertex, and then a find target operator. Here, for the target location, we'll set the point to a particle target. And now, when we move the timeline, you can see the particles are already flying straight towards uh, the target. We can slightly adjust the velocity and variation to give the motion a little bit of randomness. Now obviously we want the particles to move on the asset surface and not just fly in mid-air. So let's glue them together with an object bind operator. We need to add the asset to the operator and change the binding mode to lock the particles to the surface. One pretty important thing here is we need to lower the friction level or just set it to 0%, otherwise our particles will just stay fixed in their initial position. Now the particles should already move over the surface of our asset and towards our fixed target, so we're slowly getting to our desired effect. Okay, and now we can start adding some randomization to the movement. So let's start with a speed operator set to random 3D, uh, same as default. You can play around here with the magnitude and variation values to give random velocity to separate particles. So far the motion is too straightforward and we want the particles to weave around the asset. And we'll handle that by adding a built-in force to the simulation with quite a lot of noise. Here you can also experiment freely with the settings and types of noise. Generally here the idea is that the more randomness in the motion the better. When we move the animation forward now, you should get the particles moving around the asset pretty freely. They might reach the target eventually, though if you bump up the noise too much, they might end up just going in circles. So eventually it all boils down to what effect suits your needs. Now for the cherry on top, let's create the splines. They are generated with a spline paths operator and they need a separate tie splines object. Here you can just hit create new and Typhoon will just create such an object for you. Now we should see all the particles moving around the object and each one is tracing a spline in its path. 
To have a more complex weaving effect, you can either copy the whole event several times, along with adding new tie icons as particle sources, or you could just handle that with several other operators. For instance, you can add the branch operator, which will work similarly to a crawling ivy. And for this one, it's better to start with fewer particles and then add several branching events. They might go to a separate type of event with a new object bind operator. And if you would like to go even further, you might consider adding a resample operator, which should birth additional particles in between all the branching. When you combine all that, you should see that the spline paths are getting pretty complex, which is ultimately what we want to achieve with this effect. Now all we need to do is to set up our spline measure to get it all ready for rendering. We can already hide our asset and enable the tie spline measure modifier. Here you can play around with the spline's radius and you can also achieve a pretty cool effect here by using the multiply radius by length option. This one will multiply the spline's radii depending on their length. If you invert the effect you will get a bigger radius on longer splines or those that are birthed earlier in the simulation. Now we've got our simulation pretty much ready to go. We can just add a camera, turn on our scene lights and hit render. That is pretty much all about your imagination. For a quick wrap up, here you can see how you can really easily translate your simulation to a different asset. First we'll add some tie icons as particle birth sources and just copy the whole tie flow solver. Next we'll select a vertex on the asset as our target and replace any reference to the asset in the whole flow. Then you can just play around with all the settings, force noise values, spline radius, etc. And then it's pretty much it, you can look it all at your creation. So thanks for watching guys and see you around.